Well, we're on the road in Venice, Italy, the site of the Venice Biennale, the oldest and most prestigious international biennial art exhibition in the world. The theme this year is All the World's Futures. The exhibit is curated by Okwi Nwezor of Nigeria, who's the first African-born curator of the 120-year-old festival. He's described All the World's Futures as a, quote, project devoted to a fresh appraisal of the relationship of art and artists to the current state of things. And Wazer has been widely credited for bringing political art back to the Venice Biennale. He has said he was inspired by the 1974 biennial when part of the exhibits were dedicated to Chile to protest the U.S.-backed coup that overthrew Chile's democratic government. As part of this year's seven-month exhibit, there is an epic live reading of all three volumes of Karl Marx's Das Kapital. Meanwhile, the artist Adam Pendleton incorporated the Black Lives Matter slogan into his exhibit, which appears in the Belgian pavilion. And the Brazilian artist Vic Muniz created a boat covered in the front page of a Venice newspaper published the day after nearly 400 migrants drowned off the Italian island of Lampedusa in October of 2013. This year's Biennale has not been without controversy. In May, the city of Venice shut down Iceland's pavilion in the Biennale after the artist Christopher Bouchel, working in collaboration with the Muslim communities of Venice and Iceland, turned a 10th century church that's been closed down into a working mosque. Police claimed the art project was a threat to public safety. Well, we are joined by Okwe and Wazer right here in Venice. We're speaking in the Arsenale. In addition to being the chief curator of the Venice Biennale, he's director of the Haus der Kunst Museum in Munich, Germany. He's also an art critic, editor, and writer. Okwe and Wazor, it's an honor to have you with us um, here. Uh, right behind the major theater where Creative Time, a New York-based art and activism organization, is holding its summit. Can you first place us um, for people all over the world who are watching, what is the Venice Biennale, and where is it in Venice? Well, thank you so much, Amy, for having me uh, in Democracy Now. Uh, it's a great privilege to, you know, speak to you right at the epicenter of the Biennale, uh, the Arsenale, uh, which is uh, a large complex of buildings. Uh, dating back to the 10th century, um, <clears throat> in which um, many parts of this complex have been turned into exhibition spaces uh, for the Biennale. So in a sense, the Biennale um, is not only situated within the historical fabric of commerce, of you know, transnational trade and geopolitical changes, but it is also located, if you will, in this push and pull of the relationship between modernity and industrialization. So it's very apt that this year's Biennale is very much engaged with all the histories that this very place embodies. Talking about turning spears into plowshares, we're sitting in the Arsenale, which was an old arsenal. I think it was the first industrial assembly line. They made warships here, a warship in a day. Mm. And yet today, it serves a very different purpose. Well, you know, you, you, you made a reference to the fact that uh, Christoph Bushel's um, pavilion for the Icelandic pavilion, you know, it was located in a decommissioned, um, you know, Catholic church that had been closed down, you know, uh, for over 40 years. And so what you're really witnessing in Venice is um, the way in which historical uh, architecture, historical sites have also been similarly repurposed for the purposes of making contemporary art exhibitions. Because of the very vastness of these spaces and the vastness of contemporary art, these buildings are very much attractive for artists and the kind of scope and scale of work that they produce. And uh, in a sense, the, the relationship between the exhibition and the residue of history that resides on this site is very important to explore. And we have tried to do so 
both in relation to what happens here in the Arsenale, this old industrial site, this old um, manufactory, if you will, uh, as well as in the in the in the you know the central pavilion, look at in the Giardini, not too far from here. Mm. So let me ask you about art and activism, the complaints so often that art is removed from the world. Here we are in a very rarefied space in Venice, absolutely magnificent. The gondolas go by, um, although, of course, Venice is very threatened by climate change and the rising waters. Uh, I've just finished the headlines. As you heard, Ferguson's state of emergency. You just gave a speech today to hundreds of people where you connected the issue of the Black Lives Matter movement, the issue of slavery, and the issue of the relevance of art today. Why should people care about art when so much is happening, uh, painful in people's everyday lives? Well, I mean, there are many reasons why people should care about art. First and foremost, because artists have a lot of important things to say, a lot of important subjects to, uh, to explore. And artists have a lot of meaning that they produce that can engage us to allow us to really look at, you know, the world in, in deeper, meaningful, but at the same time, more probing ways. So I do, I do feel that people should care about art, not only because of its, the fact that art necessarily changes the world, but I like to sort of to think about the, what I do and the way I work with artists as a position of learning I and mean, through engaging the substance of their thinking, their concepts, and the material that come together to produce the kind of effect that art conveys. So art matters in many, many different ways, and I think it's both in the large and small ways that one can begin to see the, the utility of art, not as something to be appropriated as propaganda or for ideological purposes, but the utility of art as a learning tool, as a teaching tool, but also as a way for the public to learn how to kind of expand their view of the world. And this Biennale in particular, I've been immensely struck by the, the level and the deepness and the depth of engagement by artists really thinking about so many subject matter. You mentioned Adam Pendleton with Black Lives Matter. But if you go throughout the exhibition, what is very obvious is that the artist as an engaged subject, artists as people who interrogate the relationship between form and meaning is, you know, more than, um, um, you know, something that's essential, but also uh, deeply engaging for the public at large. I want to turn right now to the artist, Adam Pendleton, who mm -hmm. you just mentioned. Uh, he is the person who incorporated Black Lives Matter into uh, the exhibit at the Belgian Pavilion here at the Venice Biennale. Adam Pendleton uh, recently spoke uh, to Artsy about the exhibit. One of the things that ended up becoming an important part of the project was the language that cropped up after the recent fatal shootings uh, in the United States of people like Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown, and that is the Black Lives Matter language. So I have incorporated that language into the installation. So I was really given the opportunity to think through that broad idea um, through my own work in very specific ways. That sort of involved me looking at uh, Black Dada, which is the foundation for all of the things that I do. The merging of Black as an open-ended signifier and Dada as a kind of a movement and art. How do these two things converge? And Black Life Matters seem to be a kind of perfect way to encapsulate a response to that. That was Adam Pendleton describing uh, the exhibit at the Belgian Pavilion. Now, I have to say that uh, the description of Venice right now, if you can just give us the landscape of the Biennale, um, where it takes place in this city. Well, the Biennale is divided into two major parts. One. Um, is the exhibition organized by the artistic director and chief curator, which I'm 
the one, and the other are the national pavilions in which curators and organizations and museums from different countries organize the exhibitions that are, you know, located in the individual pavilions in the Giardini and in the Arsenale and, of course, throughout the city of Venice. For the countries that do not have pavilions, they rent spaces in different parts of the city to organize their exhibition. So, but the, the fundamental part of the Biennale, though, is this relationship between the international exhibition and the national, you know, pavilion. So this intersection of these two modalities makes always for a very interesting conversation between artists and artworks in the Biennale. And we're going to come back to this discussion and uh, talk about Okwe and Windsor himself. Uh, how he came to be the first African-born curator of the oldest and the um, most well-known biennial uh, art exhibition. It's called the Venice Biennale in the world. Stay with us.